Welcome. In this video, we are going to learn how to inspect the estimated values before making conclusion. And the learning objectives are first inspection of results and adjustments, final analysis, and interpretation of results. We are going to use Facebook based on the estimate from previous sessions. Results can be presented in different ways. But in order to make inspection of results, a good way is to present a comparison between estimated values and market values. This can help detecting any abnormal estimates. Here we have presented two sets of estimated relative values. That is, values estimated from sales per share against market values and earnings per share against market values. The important question is, why do we need inspection of results? The aim of inspecting the results is to see if the estimates make any meaningful sense. As we said earlier, valuation is not only about numbers, but also common sense judgment. Usually, this stage involves discovering any outlier or abnormal estimates. Estimated values are considered abnormal when they show very big difference compared to market values. These are our estimates for Facebook and its peers. First, based on earnings per share, we can clearly see very huge differences between values estimated from earnings multiples and market prices. Some estimates are very big, while others are very small. These values are suspiciously abnormal. For example, $35.63 against $173.59 for Facebook. $138.57 versus $1,031.45 for Alphabet and the rest. If relative values are right, they should be close or near to market values with slight deviations, either up or down. Note that our estimated values are regarded as fair values. Therefore, even if market values are wrongly priced, the unfairness is not expected to be very huge. Second, based on sales. We can see that the estimates that are based on sales multiples appear to make sense, except on three companies, Interaction, Wix.com, and the Switch. For example, the estimated relative share price for Interaction is $53,847.45 compared to market price of just $64.85, which is a very huge difference and unrealistic. The same observation applies to other two companies, as we can see. Once we have discovered abnormalities in the estimates, we need to make adjustments and perform further analysis until we see reasonable values. So, how can we adjust the results? We can have several adjustments depending on the estimated results. In our case, we have two abnormalities. Therefore, the adjustments can be as follows. First, the first adjustment is to ignore all the estimates that are based on earnings because they are not realistic. But we need to ask ourselves why earnings multiples appear not suitable for our case analysis. The price earning ratio is a general measure of how much investors are willing to pay for a company's earnings. A higher price earning 
would suggest that more investors are willing to pay for the company's earnings and the vice versa. That's why the price earnings is one of the most commonly used valuation metrics by investors, investment analysts, professionals, and the general public. Its main friends comparing to the price sales multiple is that earnings can be used as a better proxy for cash flow than sales. That is, the price earnings takes into account companies' expenses, both operating and financing. Therefore, the price earnings multiple is not suitable, probably, because the peer companies differ significantly in their expense patterns and cash flow profiles. The second adjustment is to redefine the peers by removing the three companies with abnormal values from sales multiples. That is Interaction, Wix.com, and Switch. What more do we observe after the adjustments? Even after the two adjustments, we see that almost all companies whose market capitalizations are less than $10 billion appear to be undervalued. This may mean that the size criterion is important for our peer group. Note that this may not be always the case. Therefore, our third adjustment could be to redefine a peer group of companies with market capitalization greater than $10 billion. How do we make a final analysis? After redefining the peer group, we need to recalculate all equity values afresh based on the new redefined peer group. The peer group is now comprised of Facebook and other eight companies. The only financial data used for valuation now is sales after ignoring the earnings multiples because they were abnormal. As we see this time, there is no sign of outliers. Therefore, the estimated values seem to make sense. We can use them to make a conclusion. What about the interpretation of the result? The final thing is to interpret the result. In any type of financial analysis, the interpretation of result is not a straightforward task simply because you have the estimates. This may require digging deeper beyond the estimated value. A common way of interpreting relative valuation is to indicate and comment whether market values are overvalued or undervalued. In our case, for example, Facebook, Weibo, and Snap are considered overvalued because their market prices are greater than estimated relative values. It means investors pay more on share prices. Other companies like Alphabet, Baidu, and Twitter are considered undervalued because their market prices are less than relative values. It means investors pay less on market price. Finally, to conclude, you should remember that valuation can be an art. And relative valuation cannot give you a single value, but a range of values that are close or near to market value.